Thanks for joining me for this video of the Ace GMET. I don't know how you pronounce this, but uh, Ace GMET low cost digital multimeter. I just got it from Amazon. Uh, in the back here, you can also see uh, an oscilloscope that I bought for like 70 bucks. This was $34, actually 33 something. It has a backlight, the backlight just went off, uh, but you can turn it back on. You just press and hold this button. And I've also got some other test equipment here. I'm trying to build my home lab. So there's a spectrum analyzer in the background there, an old analog scope. Uh, I've actually got several multimeters, including this clamp meter. I'll talk about that later. But the main focus is going to be on this new ACE GMET meter. So in the world of multimeters, they all work somewhat the same. Uh, this is a Wavetech one I bought about 20 years ago and what I like about it is that it has uh, manual scales. So you can set it to different ranges and that generally means it responds very quickly. Also I have this smaller one here that I bought from Radio Shack that I kind of keep with me at all times. It's nice and small. Uh, it also has some manual ranges. A lot of multimeters these days are going to have automatic ranges. And if we zoom in on the new meter, the JXM8000 model, we'll be able to go through the functions. So this meter has both automatic and manual ranges. Over here, there are the automatic ranges. And I will turn it on. You can see how quick it comes on. Very good. And I can turn on the backlight. It only stays on for a while. But I'll show you the backlight. Right now I switched it uh, past the NCV non-contact voltage. There is a little sensor up here that you can put next to an outlet or something and it tries to find out if the outlet is powered or not. Um, works pretty well, but don't rely on it. The main functions for the multimeter, however, this is the DC voltage range or AC. So if I hit this select button, I can go between AC and DC. I'm going to leave it in DC mode. Then, of course, we have ohms. Uh, I currently have this thing hooked up to about a 23 meg ohm resistor, which I made out of several resistors. So you can see those resistors here. That's the only way I could get up past uh, 10 meg ohms. I didn't have something in the 23 meg ohm range. But the next range is capacitance. I'm not going to switch it to every one and demo every one. I'll just walk through them here for you. Uh, capacitance, and I've tested that from a few picofarads up through a thousand microfarads. It seems to work very nicely. Uh, there is a frequency counter, which um, seems to work from at least 10 hertz up to uh, 1 megahertz, but uh, actually was able to get it to work from 1 hertz, if you wait long enough, up to about 10 megahertz if the signal is large enough. There's also the uh, obligatory diode slash continuity setting. And then we have our manual ranges. This is the setting for the ohms ranges, uh, 1000 ohms, 10K, 100K, 1000K, don't know why they didn't label it, 1 meg, 10 meg, and a 100 meg scale, which seems to work based on my resistor test there. Temperature down here, you can measure temperature. They include a temperature probe for that, which seems to be very nice construction. Uh, and then beyond that, we're in the amp range. Um, and so you can go down to 100 microamps. This is DC amps. Up to 10 amps. Of course, like most multimeters, the 10 amp is a separate plug-in for that. The other range, the lower ranges, you have to plug in to down here. There's an AC amps range over here. From 10 amps down to 100 milliamps. DC allows you to go down to 100 microamps. That's interesting. Um, moving on beyond that, we have the DC volts and AC volts is up here from 1 volt, 1000 millivolts, 10 volts, 100 volts, or 750 volts max. <clears throat> You'll notice that this one up here actually says hertz. I think that's because when you're on that range, in this range here, in the AC volts, uh, it will actually read out the frequency over some a limited range, of course. And then there is this live setting, which is used somewhat like the non-contact voltage mode, but with a contact with the probe to check for live circuits. 
So here I've set it on the 1000 millivolt scale, one volt uh, scale that is, and it's in AC volts mode. I'm feeding in a signal which is one kilohertz, two volts peak to peak from an arbitrary waveform generator. So, why is it reading 710 millivolts? Well, that's because the ARB generator here puts out 2 volts peak to peak, which is 1 volt peak, which is 0 0.7071 volts RMS. This is pretty close to that, within a percent or so, which is the spec on this unit. Okay, so let's get into the performance a little bit more. Uh, this, remember, is a $34 meter, uh, but it's really amazing for $34. I would definitely recommend it based on my experience so far. Uh, this is a user manual and it has of course the obligatory specifications for the thing. Plus minus 0.8 percent plus three digits. So that's pretty good for AC voltage or DC voltage. It's saying 0.5 percent. Yeah, hard to say what it really is. Uh, I have used my other meters and compared it and it seems to be uh, within one percent of what all the meters say. So I've also tried it with several components, various resistors over here, various capacitors here, a diode, transistor. All the tests I've run so far with those tend to indicate that it works very well. So speed of response is often pretty important. Right now I have my power supply set up to put out 5 volts and I'm going to hook up the meter and you can see how quickly it responds. 3, 2, 1, now. So it took about one second or so, and that's in the auto mode. So let's see how fast it is if I put it in the manual mode. So when I put it over to the manual mode, of course it reads the same thing. Uh, when I went there, I went through off and that shut off the backlight instantly, so I had to turn that back on. You may notice it also beeps a lot. I consider this thing quite beepy. Wish it wouldn't do that, but that's okay. I can get used to it. Three, two, one, connect. About the same speed actually. So auto is almost as fast as being in manual. I'll probably still stick with manual. It's just the way I like to do stuff. So if you're interested in doing continuity measurements, you might be interested in how fast the buzzer sounds and how fast the display responds. It's quite good, as we'll see. So I'm going to touch the uh, two leads together. Pretty good. So the last thing we'll look at here is using the current metering mode. I've got the probe common into the black over here and I've got the red one into the 10 amp, I don't know if you can see that or not, the 10 amp uh, inlet port there. And I'll turn this on. Oh, it's very upset. It says lead. Why is that? That's because I'm in voltage mode and it's trying to warn me that if I'm trying to measure current in voltage mode, I'm probably going to blow a fuse. If I move this on down to the current setting, the 10 amp current setting, it is still beeping. That's not good. So what I'm going to do is unplug this, and then I'll plug this back in, and now it's quiet. And so at this point, I could route current through here uh, from the plus to the minus, and I could read the current. However, um, I probably will not be using it that way, except maybe for some low current circuits. I would never do that with a high current circuit approaching 10 amps for a couple of reasons. One reason is when you send current through a meter like this, there is a certain resistance between here and here through these leads. And so the voltage that your load is getting is not what you think anymore. And this meter drops a fair amount of voltage if you're close to the maximum within a range. If, say, you're in the 10 amp range and you're measuring 1 amp, 
the drop on the voltage seems to be reasonable. Maybe 0.2 volts, I don't know. You need to figure it out. But um, if you're close to the maximum of the range in the 10 amp setting, my measurements suggest you got about a 2.5 volt drop across the meter. And in addition to that, uh, you're in 10 amp setting, 10 amp range, and you're trying to measure 10 amps. You're probably going to blow a fuse. You probably shouldn't be doing it. Uh, they do include some extra fuses, but um, if you insist on doing it, at least remember that there is this thing I call it a burden voltage, where the meter drops the voltage that's going to your load, and you're not really measuring things. It's an example of a measurement affecting the operation of the thing you're trying to measure. Now there is an alternative to that. And I've used it with automobiles, and that is one of these. So this is a so-called clamp meter, and you can basically have a wire, say, like this, with current flowing through it, and you can open up the jaws and clip it there, and the magnetic field that's created around this wire then is sensed by this clamp, and then it reads it out accurately without any burden voltage at all, no drop in the, the uh, voltage of, that's applied to the load, and no chance of blowing a fuse, and frankly this is the only way to do something on a car. So that's it for my review of this Ace GMET meter. Don't know if that's the right pronunciation, but I love this meter. Uh, it comes, as you see here, with the probes. These are actually very nicely made. The structure is very good. Don't have any concerns about that. A little bit of concern about plugging this in and out. I can feel it wiggling a little bit, but I think it'll probably last fine. Uh, this temperature probe is super well made, and this meter is $34 on Amazon. I mean, that's insane. This thing does a lot for a little bit of money. So I hope you enjoyed the review, and um, see you later.